surf fishing in SoCal. Uh, today we're kind of just going to do a general rundown on surf fishing in San Diego. We'll go step by step, literally from start to finish, getting our bait to getting our fish. So let's get into it. Now step one is getting sand crabs. I'll leave a link to a description of a detailed video on how to find sand crabs, but bottom line, you're looking for these exact indents in the sand here. These look like a bunch of babies. You can see how small the little V's are. If I scoop right here with my dollar store colander, you can actually see a couple of them running around. Now if we sift this out, we've got our bait. Now most of these are a bit small, but to be perfectly honest, four of these on a hook, three of these on a hook, you're gonna be catching fish, okay? This, that's as big as I'll use. So, for, for more details on that, check out the, uh, the link in the description and the, maybe I'll drop a tag in there. All right, so once you got your sand crabs, you got your bait for the day, you're ready to go. We'll get into our rig. So we're gonna be using a Carolina rig and I will drop a link to the video I did on how to tie a Carolina rig in the description uh, but bottom line this is a number two mosquito hook tied with a clinch knot about two and a half feet of 15 pound mono sorry 15 pound fluorocarbon tied to a size seven barrel swivel and some some of the brand sizes are different but it's about 11 to 12 millimeters i believe um, then we tie it off to uh, actually We'll tie it off to 15 pound mono, but the 15 pound mono right here, we've got a bead in between the weight, and that bead is just there to protect that knot from this weight's edges rubbing it around. So that's the gist of the Carolina rig. You can see I'll run through it here. We've got our hook right there in my finger. Um, and I'm using An eight, eight foot six rod, you can see the, the specs there, but it's an Okuma SST. Eight six, medium action, eight to 17 pounds, one fourth to five eighth ounces in terms of the lure. Uh, the reel today, I'm just using the Pursuit because I was actually uh, guiding earlier and I don't like to have clients use my best stuff because a lot of times it drops into the water. I typically use a Battle 4000 or a Spin Fisher 6 4500. Um, and that's the Battle 4000 I use for Carolina rig stuff, the Spin Fisher I use for lures. But that's the gist of the gear we're using, that's the gist of the bait we're using. Now we're gonna get to fishing. So out here there's not a whole lot of structure today, but I've been hooking up left and right on yellowfin croaker. And that's going to be one of the most common species you'll catch in San Diego. Uh, and the ticket has been one, these soft shelled sand crabs. So I'll show you here. You got these really translucent, nice soft shelled sand crabs. That is going to get hit. So I'll just hook it right through the shell there. And that's too big. I'm going to do two more on the hook. So I'll do this guy. And I'll even do one of these tiny little guys. You know what? I'll do two of them. So that's four sand crabs on a hook. And I mean, I try all sorts of different things throughout a day, but today this is what's been working. So we'll throw this guy out there. <clears throat> and right around sunset, full casts have, ten have been tending to work really well. So I'm just hucking it as far as I can. That's not always going to work. You kind of got to figure out what's working that day, but I'll hook it out there. And all I'm doing now is keeping tension. <clears throat> Current's a little bit bad, so we're kind of moving south with it. And I'm just keeping tension throughout it, waiting for that bite. Bite will usually start a little subtle and then it'll turn into a Di -di 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 -di, and the rod tip will start bending over. And that's when you set into it. And all you're doing from then is, again, keeping tension. So tension is always key. Whether you're 
feeling the bite or whether you're fighting the fish. I don't know if you can tell, but I am walking to my left, I'm trying to stay steady for the camera. Best advice is when the current is running one way, get your bait out there, cast it in the opposite direction that the, the current is flowing, and then keep that directly in front of you. So once it catches up to you, you wanna walk with it. And keep walking with it if you feel your zone is decent enough the whole way. I'm casting that out right. Flip my bail as soon as it hits, that way I don't have any excess slack. And I'm just keeping tension, waiting for that bite. Just like that, we're on. So I'm gonna put put my money on Yellowfin Croaker. Solid hit, very minimal on the fight. It's coming in pretty easy. A little bit of fight in there. And a good idea, this is a pretty small fish, but treat it like it's big. Work it in with the waves here. So it's fighting around there as this wave helps me in. I'll walk it back. And I always try and if it's if it's a decent enough fish, you kind of want to just beach it. So you keep that rod tip low as you bring them in. And that's a good way to not lose fish. Whenever you lift it up like this, you basically present an opportunity for the fish to pop off because fish are heavier out of the water than they are in the water, at least in terms of in correlation to our line. Right there is a yellowfin croaker. Pretty fish. You can see it's named very descriptively. Fill the center back. And I mean, it really is as simple as that. You can get technical as heck, and sometimes Spotfin and Corbina are running pretty good in the shallows, but right now, they're just not. And there's a, certainly a possibility a Spotfin or Big Corbina is hanging out where I'm casting right now, but all I'm doing is taking my odds, fishing to the conditions, and putting my bait in the best percentage spot because that's where fish are biting right now. They're, they're biting on far casts, and most of the fish out there right now are yellowfin croaker. And the other thing, never set the hook too early. A lot of guys, that's their first mistake. You'll feel that dip, 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 dip. Don't set the hook then, because the fish is just playing with the bait. Don't set it until it turns from a dip, 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 to a dip, 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 just like that. Wow, that couldn't have been any better. This is a bit better of a fish. I'm still betting Yellowfin Croaker, but definitely a better size than the last one. <clears throat> so that one barely had the first dip dip. It kind of just went straight into the, the full take. And again, since this is a bit bigger, I'm gonna be nice and careful with it. We're kind of in a standstill right now and then that wave right there just picked me up. So I'm gonna bring him in with the wave. And it is another yellowfin croaker, definitely a bit bigger. Oh, he's bloody up. Which is odd because not gutted. We'll see if he makes it. <clears throat> Looks like he's good to go. <clears throat> now the other thing that we didn't talk about much in, in this video, um, and we won't, is reading the surf. 
Again, there's a link in the description for reading the surf, the video that I did on that. Um, the only reason we're not doing it today is because there is just about nothing to read today. The uh, surf is pretty flat, but obviously the fish are still there. They're still biting. Um, but the idea behind reading the surf is you're looking for all those troughs, those scallops, those deep pockets that typically are points where rip currents might form and where water just generally gets sucked into and over. And the reason they're good for fishing is because bait gets sucked into those and Corbina and Spoffin like to cruise into those areas, so do Yellowfin Croaker. And they will either cruise through those areas or hang out in them, depending on the size of them. And they will just feed on whatever gets sucked in there, including your bait. So that is why you should definitely check out that video on reading the surf. And the idea there is you, you can show up any tide, any beach that's sandy, because this this sandy structure is going to change on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and you want to be able to show up and not have to rely on, oh, the other day I heard there was a trough over here. Um, rather, rather than that, you show up and you're like, all right, I can spot that. I see by the way the water's moving that there is a hole there and that's a good looking spot. Pretty one. It's a gorgeous fish. Definitely fighting a little better. 